pleasant good night to each and every one of you, those that are viewing online. We want to welcome you on our platform tonight. Um, we want to start off our program with a word of prayer, so we're going to invite you guys to bow your heads as we pray. We want to um, ask you wherever you are to close your eyes and just lift up, just lift, just let us lift up God in our prayers tonight. All that we, we can come and praise your holy name. Father, at this moment, we ask that uh, as we begin, may bring only honor and glory to you. Bless us now as we begin our service for tonight. And those that are viewing, bless them as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we want to welcome you guys. It's uh, another prayer and testimony night. Amen. You guys can either share your, share your comments by testifying. You can pray along with us. Send your prayers in the group chat. Send your prayers via online comment your prayers as well so um, we're going to start off by singing our first song we're going to do a chorus tonight chorus make a joyful noise unto the lord make a joyful noise unto the lord we land praise god come the lord his presence will sing is he is everlasting and it's true, he's got true honor you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, praise God, amen. So we want to start out, I'm going to do the first testimony tonight. You guys can share your testimony via the comments and um, then after we're going to have a prayer session, including my pastor and myself, and then we're going to get into our presentation for tonight. But my testimony is basically, God has been good to us throughout this entire coronavirus issue. Um, I people are diverting to God now because they need God more than ever before and we want to take the opportunity to tell people that there is hope beyond this corona or COVID-19 thing. I want you to know that God still sits upon his throne and God is the one that is in control of Belize and despite we have coronavirus now, we are to pray as brothers and sisters for each other more the time is now to pray so i want to encourage you to anybody pray for that individual if you don't have anything good to do throughout this quarantine thing because you know you get kind of bored big time now is to pray a bit more if you if you feel the need of praying for somebody pray for that individual and you know i've heard so many about in the coronavirus the time now is to pray for that individual and their entire family. Jesus still loves them and we have to pray for them and let them know that we have a God that still sits upon his throne. So appeal to anybody, if you're hearing me, pray for the individual who contracted the coronavirus. We learned today from um, Prime Minister that her mother also got it today. So let's keep that entire family within our prayers so that they can we want to give God thanks for that, but we're going to go on our knees now. We're going to invite Pastor to come along as we do a session of prayer. We want to we want to remember all those within our churches though, that are viewing. We want to remember the young man that I prayed for the other day, Pastor. I think his name is Andre. We want to keep him in our prayers. One of our dear brother has the coronavirus as well. We want to pray for him. We want to pray for those that are sick in our church as well. Um, we want to pray for Sister Link as well. We want to keep her in our prayers. She's suffering with cancer. And we want to lift her up in prayers. And anybody that likes to share your prayer request, you can share it in the comments. And as a church, we're going to be praying for your prayer request. Amen. So at this time, we're going to invite you to bow your heads if you can go on your knees as we talk to God. Let us pray that. Oh God, tonight we bow before you. First, we give you thanks for your tender mercies and your amazing grace. 
We stand before you, Lord, and we praise and glorify your most holy name. Father, tonight our world seems to be in chaos and confusion, but we're thankful that despite all the chaos and come to your throne and find hope. Amen. And our Father, all the names that were mentioned, we pray for those that are sick specifically. We pray for the lady and her mother who have been affected with the coronavirus and we ask you to be with them. Amen. We pray, Father, that you would be there to comfort, to encourage, and do self-reflection and do. We pray that you would protect those in San Pedro, be with the authorities, give them wisdom to continue to make right decisions for your people. Father, we pray that you would bless our ministers of government, our prime minister, the leader of the opposition. May you help them to make decisions. May you counsel them. And Father, I pray that you would be with all our doctors, nurses, those in the front line. Something to do with taking care of your people here in Belize continue to bless our country. We ask you that through this experience we will be drawn closer to you and to each other. Father, we pray for Brother Andre. We ask you to bless him, help him, lay your hands upon him, bring healing to him in our neighboring countries and throughout the world. We ask you to look down with mercy and grace upon your people, O oh great God. O oh, loving Father, we pray that you would remember our church Sinai, all our members. May you bless them and may you and Father help us that we would stay connected to you and keeping our eyes on the prize and looking up knowing that our redemption dry at night. So Lord, I thank you for listening to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. O oh, loving Father and our oh God in heaven, Father, we're so thankful that we have the opportunity that we can still preach your word and talk to your people. And Father, as people view tonight, we ask that you give them the, the hope that they desire to God, knowing that you are their God and you still in control of our world. Amen. Father, we ask that you continue to bless those. Touch them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, the God that are you in it. You know the difficulties that we face on a daily basis, but God, right now we ask that you take control of our problems again. We place them in your hands and we know that you can take care of them. Father, we want to lift up the people that are suffering from coronavirus here and all over the world. Father, we want you to bless them, touch them from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet. Let them know that you are the great physician and you can help them and you're going to help them again. Continue to bless our community here in Ladyville. Continue to bless those that are sick among, among us, Sister Lynn. Father, we ask that you touch her right now from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Let her know that you are her God. Her God. Continue to bless us. Help us to have a wonderful time tonight. For us, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again, we want to welcome you guys. Just a couple of announcements that I'd like to leave with you. On Friday night, we will not be in church, but we're going to show you guys an a, a, a idea of how we do family worship. So we're going to be in somebody's home. We're going to be doing an entire family worship session. So we invite you guys again on Friday night. We believe that we're going to be starting at 7 o'clock or I believe at 6.37 when the sun sets. We want to invite you guys Again, we'll be sending you the link via the WhatsApp group. And you can also tune in on our Facebook page, Ladyville Sinai Seventh-day Adventist Church, so that you can view the video as well. We want to turn over the rest of the service, and our presentation is going to be done by our pastor tonight. Amen? Amen. We want to call him forward. Okay, good night, everybody. We thank you for joining us tonight. We're really glad that you're taking time to listen to. Uh, there's a lot of positive. In we don't only want to hear negative, and this is why as a church, we have decided that we want to bring good news. On um, Tuesday night, we had the senator who presented uh, 
different suggestions and ideas on what to do with our children when we are locked down. I also did a, started a presentation talking about the signs of the end times. You know, we're coming live from Ladyville Sinai Seventh Day Adventist Church. And as a people, we are a people of the Bible, a people of the book. We are people that believe what the Word of God says. We believe that we are, li we are living in serious times, okay? And we want to continue that presentation that we started on, on Tuesday night, okay? And this is where we are. The world, the end of the world, is near. It's very near. We're not alarmists. It has been for a while that we have been preaching that Jesus Christ is coming back again. It has been many years. Uh, people have listened to us. We preach on the tents, in our churches, through publications. We have been preaching. We have been preaching in many ways through songs. And we still believe that Jesus is coming back. And you would notice that the things that we have been saying for years is coming to pass before our eyes. And we just simply want to take a closer look in the Word of God as God reminds us of some of the signs that we will be seeing just before he comes back again. And we thank God for the prophecies that he has left with us in the book of Daniel. As I showed you, Daniel and the image of Daniel in Daniel chapter 2, we learned that this was actually God giving Daniel history in advance, showing the world uh, different were kingdoms of men that would have existed, being overthrown, and another one takes over. And it shows that we're living in the toes, which was mixed with iron and clay, a divided kingdom. All right? I think we have been over this on Tuesday night, so I don't want to linger on this. And Rome which was represented by the legs of iron, was then divided by barbarian tribes. And it was divided into 10 divisions. Okay, remember this is where we are living in this world presently, okay? And the 10 toes symbolized by the Anglo-Saxons, the Lombards, the Burgundians, Visigoths, Franks, Suevi, Alemanni, the Herilites, Vandals, Ostrogoths. This is actually modern Europe. If you notice that these nations does exist today, it's showing us that we are living in the toes of this image of Daniel chapter 2. For example, the Anglo-Saxons became the English, the Lombards, the Italians. And as I say Italians, you know Italy is one of the country that has been hit so hard by this coronavirus. And we have the Burgundians, which are the Swiss, and the Visigoths, the Spanish. Spain is another country that has been hit terribly. The France became the French, the Suevi, the Portuguese, the Alemanni, the Germans, and three of them were destroyed, which was the Herulai, Vandals, and the Ostrogoths, okay? Now, the scripture says in the book of Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44, that in the days of these kings, and I want you to notice the plural. It says, in the days of these kings, plural, it didn't say one. In the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. So Christ will establish a kingdom in a time when there will be multiple kings. Okay? And that's the time of the divided kingdom, or the kingdom that is mixed with iron and clear in the feet, all right? We believe that Jesus will come and establish his kingdom in the divided kingdom, a kingdom that will not be destroyed. So we believe that we are living in the last days of this earth's history. Now, we don't believe that we're living in the end of time. We believe that we're living in the time of the end. There is a difference. The time of the end is a space of time just prior to the 
time of the end when everything comes to an end. And we believe that we are living in, during that time period. The scripture says in Daniel 2.45 that the dream is certain and interpretation is sure. Now, Stephen Hawking, a famous man in our, country, in the, our world, sorry, had these words to say. It's not only from Bible prophecy, but I'm going to show you. Other than that, that even men, intelligent men, men of government, men that have great minds, they know that something great is happening and is about to happen. Listen to what he says. It is important for the human race to spread out into space for the survival of the species, Hawking says. Life on Earth is at the ever-increasing risk of being wiped out by a disaster such as sudden global warming, nuclear war, a genetically engineered virus, or other dangers we have not yet thought of. Notice those words. Hawkins, seeing what is taking place in our world, and it is in our potential as a race to destroy ourselves. But one thing I'm sure of is that God is in charge and God will not allow that. He has shown us in his word, in his word, that no nuclear weapon, he has shown us that no terrorist will put an end to this world. Jesus has shown us in the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, that he himself will put an end to this world, okay? We have nothing to fear when it comes to that. But it is not saying that prior to the second coming of Christ, that there will not be great disaster and the loss of human life. Even Hawkins is telling us that life on earth is at an ever increasing risk of being wiped out by a disaster. He sensed that, you know what? Something is happening. Er, it is in man's hand to cause serious damage, all right? And we have seen some serious damage. Example, 9-11 and the terrorist attack on America, and that continues to happen. It talks also about global warming. And lately, I don't know if you notice, uh, the weather is so, uh, it has changed a lot. There was a time that you can go and you know for sure that this time would be a time of warmth, of cold, of rain, but even up to today, that has changed, okay? He also says nuclear war. He talks about the possibility of a nuclear war, genetically engineered virus, all right? You hear a lot of rumors concerning this COVID-19. Some say that it was, uh, it started in, the, uh, in China and there's a possibility that men started it. There's a whole lot of uh, philosophy concerning it. But one thing I could tell you, that the devil is behind it. God's, God allow it, but he is not the one who originated this. God is not in the business of destroying people's lives. If you remember when Jesus came to earth, Jesus says that I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. You see, Jesus is in the business of saving people, not destroying people. But at times, God allows certain things to come. And if he loves us, then why would God allow certain things to come? To get our attention. At times, we have natural disaster and the loss of life and sickness comes our way not to destroy us, but God is trying to get our attention. As a world, as a people, as a race, we have drifted so far away from God. You could ask the question, how much homes today have the Bible in it? And if we do have it, do we read it? But faithfully, you will find out that every home almost have a television in it. The television have taken the place of the word of God. And through this, God has given the family a time to be together 
a time that we can pick up the Bible together and read together. So, God is trying to get our attention to cause us to pray and to read the Bible. All right? He's calling us back to Him. So even Stephen Hawking is showing that something great is happening or is about to happen or it is in man's hand to cause some serious destruction. And he said we won't find anywhere as nice as earth unless we go into another star system. And I need you to know Mars is not the solution. The only other place that we can go that is safe for us is in the heavens where Jesus dwells. Now, is it possible that our world will end by an asteroid come and hit the planet? How will our world end? All right, there are a whole lot of uh, philosophy and ideas and people have their own belief that a nuclear weapon would put an end to this world, but I've dealt with that already. One, we can trust the Bible. If you don't have a Bible, I want to encourage you to get one. And if you have one and have not been reading it, it's time for you to get back. Get back to the Bible. Some people say, what should I read? You can start with the Psalms. You can start with the book of John. You can start in Genesis. You can start wherever you would like to start. But the important thing is that you start and you can trust the Bible. Amen. I trust the Bible above every other human beings opinion or ideas you want to know why because i believe the bible is the word of god and i believe that god is wiser than us i believe that god uh, his intelligence supersede the intelligence of all of us as human beings all of us put together could never compare to the wisdom of god okay and and so when we go to the word of God, it makes wise the simple. It makes us wise unto salvation. When we go to the word of God, it gives us peace. It provides us with hope. When we go to the word of God, God's word gives us understanding and it gives us a purpose to live. When we go to the word of God, it has a creative power. The same power that created this world. That power is in the Word of God. And if we go to the Word of God, we will find the power in there to recreate our lives and to create in us clean hearts and make us more like Christ and give us a purpose to live and a hope despite of what is taking place in our world today. The Bible can be trusted and I say praise God for that. Amen. Another thing I want you to know is that God is in control of this world events. You will find out that leaders come and go. Uh, prime ministers and presidents come upon the scene. They make decisions for different nations. And sometimes they make decisions and the, the decision that they make affects us. And it seems as though that they are in charge. But I need you to understand something. That God is still seated upon the throne symbolizing he is still in charge of this world event Amen. when i read the book of daniel chapter 2 the scripture shows me that god is in charge of world events god shows the rise and falls of human empire but at the end it leads to god establishing his everlasting kingdom there is a unseen hand working behind the scenes there is an unseen hand working where God at the end will have the last say and will have the victory. And so, beloved friend of mine, it is important for you to remember, despite how the world seems today, that it is in chaos and God has forsaken us. That is not true. God is still in control tonight. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. But God does not only want to control this world. More than ever, he wants to control our lives. And that is the battle that is taking place between Christ and Satan over every human being on this planet. They are fighting for the throne of our heart. And it is our decision to decide who will sit on the throne of our heart. I want Jesus to sit on the throne of my heart. How about you tonight? Amen. 
the nearness of Christ's return, when I look around me and I see an increase in crime. You know, I grew up in this little country that I call home, Belize, beautiful. And I love this country very much. But never believed that there would have come a time like this where every day you would find out that someone is killed. Every day a young man is shot dead and we are getting worse. You find out that every day you turn on the news and someone has been shot down in the streets of Belize. And that is telling me that the, the coming of Christ is near. Amen. I've also seen an increase when it comes to immorality. Just recently they passed in our country. They decriminalized. Uh, it's okay then for two men to be together, two women to be together. Despite of what the Bible showed us that God said and this is displeasing to him. It shows us the condition of our world. The scripture says as it was in the days of Noah. They ate and they drank. And nothing is wrong in eating and drinking. But what the Bible was showing us that man did not have God in their thoughts. They were occupied with merrymaking. They were occupied with partying. They were occupied with everything else except God. The scripture says that the thoughts of man was evil continually and man was corrupt. Nobody had God in their mind, but God had a faithful few. One family, Noah and his family. You see, the majority of the then known world, the antediluvian world, did not have God in their mind. And history is repeating itself today. We're living in a world that God is being taken out of our schools, taken out of our homes. It is becoming a problem now to teach Bible in school, to pray in school. It is becoming a problem now for us to practice uh, the religion of Jesus Christ. And all this is telling me that Jesus coming is there. When we look at the natural disasters that takes place, and we're going to look at some of them, the scripture shows us that it's Jesus coming is very near. God desperately wants us to be ready for his kingdom. And this is why he is using various means to preach the gospel so that men, women, boys, and girls can hear it, make a decision, and be saved in his eternal kingdom. But I have no doubt that the coming of Jesus is there. And Jesus wants you and I to be ready. The disciples sitting on the Mount of Olives with Jesus came to him. In the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3, they asked Jesus a question. They said, Jesus, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? They wanted to know when the world was going to end and Jesus started giving them some signs. In Matthew 24, 4 to 5, Jesus answered and he said, Take heed that no one deceives you. That's the first sign. Take heed that no one deceives you. He was simply telling them that you need to be careful that you're not tricked. Deceive means people are being tricked. People are being led astray and they don't even know it. And so he gives a warning against that. Why? He said, for many will come in my name and will deceive many. Many people will be deceived and this has happened repeatedly. Even with church today, the churches have become big businesses. Okay, You hear of mega churches and people go there. And church have become one of the biggest business that you can find instead of a place where Christ is lifted up and people can find truth and hope in Christ. Church has taken a different direction. It has become a place of big business to make money. But beloved friend of mine, the scripture is telling us that as a people, we need to be careful that we are not deceived. Then you might ask the question, then how can I not be deceived? It's only found when we pick up the word of God and read it for ourselves. 
study it for ourselves. For example, there are money that are real, original dollars, and there are dollars that are counterfeit. How can you know a counterfeit from a real? Normally, they will give you a, the original dollar, a real one, to study it. And after you have studied that, and you know a real dollar, whenever a counterfeit one comes, you can detect that easily. It's the same thing with the Word of God. Whenever you read the Word of God and you study it and you have a knowledge of it and you know it for yourself, you will be able to detect false from the truth. We cannot depend on preachers to, to teach us alone. Yes, it's good to have people that teach us, but we cannot depend upon them alone. We need to know the Word for ourselves. We need to have a relationship with Christ for ourselves. We need to have our own experience with Christ and be careful that we are not deceived. Example, Jim Jones, as he's known as a Kool-Aid man that killed a whole pile of people that followed him blindly. We have David Koresh. He himself, in the tragedy of in Waco, Texas, uh, also killed many that followed him. Okay? And so we, we cannot follow blindly. We don't follow man. We need to follow what the Bible says because man will deceive us and man will fail us. But Jesus is faithful. Follow him. And Jesus will never fail us. We praise God for that. Amen. The scripture says if it was possible in the book of Matthew 24, 24, it says for false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Now, who are the elect? The elect are those who are God's people. The elect are those who God elects from among human beings. It doesn't mean that God selects some and leave the others. The, the elect are those who accept Christ, but the invitation is given to all. There is a doctrine of predestined or predestiny in which it is believed by some that God selects some and he does not select some. I don't believe in that. The scripture says that the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to all for a witness. Why? Because it is not the will of God that any should perish, Peter says, but all should come to repentance. So God desires every one of us to be saved. And every human being is given the fair opportunity of hearing the gospel and also to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, another thing that is taking over our world is the occult books. In Belize, we say, Obia, Negromancy. This is something that is prevalent among us as a people. We still go to the Obia man and Obia woman if we have uh, a husband or wife that we believe that we want to keep them. We're afraid of losing them. And there's a whole world in the occult and we still practice spiritism. And this is not by coincidence. It's not only that. Television more than ever not seen only during this time so much movies that promotes spiritism and the occult you can go there and on the internet and it is there loaded with it and this is not by coincidence this is the enemy working behind the scenes this bible says in first timothy chapter 4 1 to 1 and 2 the scripture says now the spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils and the truth is they are even those professed Christians who still believe that they have to go to their man or their woman for them to do something to them, to protect them, and they wear a guard, some a ring, or carry something with them in order to be protected. But beloved friend of mine, let me tell you something. When you give your heart to Christ, 
But when you're a child of God, the Bible says God will take care of you. He becomes your shield. He becomes your defense. He becomes your buckler. God becomes your shepherd. God then allows his angels to watch over you and to minister to you. And the devil cannot come and do you no harm. He has to pass through God first. If you remember in the book of Job, when Job came before God and God said, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him. And the devil says, Man, the only reason Job is serving you is because you protect him. You have a hedge about him and his family. To the people of God, I want to remind you that you have a protection around you. You have God's presence around you and his holy angels around you to protect you. And this is why I will not fail, like David says. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fail. Why? Because thou art with me. And if God is with me, then whom shall I be afraid of? I say praise God. Because God is good to us. Be careful of false Christ and false prophets. What is also becoming a norm in the religious world is that men and women professing to be men and women of God perform signs and wonders and heal and people believe it and they are drawn to these individuals even though they profess to do this and their lifestyle is contrary to what the word of God says. People believe in them. Some give them all their money, all right? Not knowing that the devil also have power to do signs and wonders. If you remember in the days of Moses, when God told Moses, go before Pharaoh, throw down your staff before him and he did that the scripture says that pharaoh called his magician they came and they did the same thing and it turned to snake the only difference was that moses snake ate up the snake of the magician but it showed you that the devil have power to do miracles we cannot believe a man or a woman is a servant of god by miracles we cannot depend upon miracles for our salvation. We have to depend solely upon the word of God. Are you here with me tonight? Amen. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 13, he performs great signs so that even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. The scripture says, in Revelation 16, 14, for they are the spirits of all demons performing signs. So you notice the devil have power to perform signs which go out to the kings of the earth. Be careful of false prophets. If you want to know God's end time plan, read his word. Everything is in his word tonight. The scripture continues, some of the other signs that you're going to hear about. Jesus says that you will hear a wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, says Matthew 24, 7. Now, you might say I've been hearing about wars and rumors of wars for a long time. Even from Bible times, there have been a whole lot of wars. But statistics show us that the 20th century, the 20th century is the bloodiest of all. We have approximately 180 million deaths. So we're living in a bloody century where a whole lot of people lost their lives. The scripture says in the book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 18, the nations were angry and your wrath has come, the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints. So, we're living in a time that the nations are angry. Just recently, if you remember, not too long ago, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, almost brought a war between them and Iran again, okay? 
Even though men sit to try to hold peace, the Bible says when they say peace and safety, there will come sudden destruction upon the earth. In the Time magazine, it talks about the nuclear threat. I could remember reading a document that says that we have so much nuclear weapons in this world that if it falls into the hands of the wrong individual, Earth, they can blow by mistake, it can cause serious damage to our Earth. All right? And all this is showing me that Christ is on his way. I say praise God for that tonight. Amen. The scripture also says in Matthew 24, 7, there will be famines. There will be famines, a lack of food. Is this a reality in a world uh, of today that we have come so far when it comes to human invention? Look at the internet, for example. I am here at Sinai, Ladyville Sinai, talking to you and probably you're listening to me all the way across the world. But tonight it shows us we have come a far way. But despite of all the inventions that we have, we have not omitted, we have not uh, solved the problem when it comes to famine. You might be in your home and have food tonight, but I need you to remember that there is someone somewhere over this world that doesn't have food. And this is why we ought to give God thanks. We ought to teach our children, don't take it for granted. Every time we have a plate of food, we ought to bow our heads and give thanks to the Most High because all things come from His hand. He is the provider, as the song says. Praise God from whom our blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. God is our provider. He's the one who provides for us. All the money that are being spent on Wars could have been used to help alleviate this problem. The United Nations report that there are food shortage in 38 countries. Food shortage, could you imagine that? One sixth of the world is suffering from famine tonight. Just as Jesus says, this is a reality in our world. One of the signs that Jesus talks about just before is coming. He's showing us that time is running out. In Matthew 24, 7, he continues to say, there will be famines and pestilence. And this is one that is a reality. This is a reality check to us. Pestilence, or in other words, disease and earthquakes in various places, it says. Sign number four, it talks about pestilences, trains of disease, resistance to antibiotics and this is a reality we are faced with a disease that there seems to be no cure for just like AIDS we're faced with a disease that is strange we're faced with a disease that have destroyed so many human lives I look on the the internet and I look on the news and I see people dying daily so much have been burned and buried and this disease have no respect for persons. I was listening to the news today as well, and I understand that the, even the Queen's son, Prince Charles, is infected with this disease. This thing is real. This is a reality. And just as the Bible tells us, beloved friend of mine, that one of the signs of the last days would be pestilence. It's not by coincidence. Jesus foretold in his divine wisdom, looking from the beginning to the end times and he warned us that whenever we see these things it's not to bring fear in our heart because the scripture may I remind you of what the scripture says I believe is in 2 Timothy 1 7 for God have not given us a spirit of fear as a people of God we are supposed to be wise but not fearful Amen. he have given us a spirit of power the spirit of a sound mind, a courageous spirit. He has given us peace. Amen. Despite of all that is taking place, God has given his people peace tonight. And I praise Jesus for that tonight. But as Jesus says, one of the signs would be pestilences, new diseases without cure. It's happening. 
I don't want to sound like an alarmist, but I need you to understand the scripture is telling us that there will be pestilences and who knows if this is the last. I don't believe it's the last. I believe the trend has been that out of the blues, here comes another disease that arrives on the scene. Some appear and disappear and some, some come and stay here. And we don't know what will become of the COVID-19. But I could tell you one thing, as long as you have Christ in your life and you are in Christ, you're safe. Not saying that you're safe from the disease, but even if you have it and die, God promised you a place in his eternal kingdom. And so we want to encourage you to start a relationship with Jesus tonight. When we see these things taking place, it should cause us to want to pray more, want to study the word of God more. Here are some other diseases that uh, came on, the, on this planet. We have the SARS, the Mancow disease, the antivirus, the bird flu, the Ebola, all these and there are much more. We have the dreaded AIDS that is plaguing so many people today, even in our little country, believes. The Bible also talks about earthquakes in diverse places. And it is believed that there are 35 earthquakes for the day, 12,000 to 14,000 for the year. You might say there have always been earthquakes, but if you notice the trend that it is increasing, and why is it increasing? As we near to the second coming of Christ, you, you will notice that it is increasing. Right? There is more earthquake, more than ever before, right? from 2000 to 2003. The United States Geological Survey, 30,000 to 35,000 earthquakes per year. So it's not declining, it is increasing. And why? We're coming down to the close of this Earth's history, beloved friend of mine. The major earthquakes, 8.0, are higher since the first century, from 100 to 3. 100 AD there was one, 100 to 500 AD there were two, 500 to 18 to 800 AD there was one, 800 to 900 AD there were three, 1000 to 1100 AD there was one, 1100 to 1200 there was one, and then the 1300 to 5, 1500 AD there were three, 1600 there were seven, notice the increase now. 1700, 13, 1800, 26, 1900 to 1983, 120, and 8, 1983 to 2009, it's up far more, okay? And it continues to increase. It's showing us that Jesus is on his way, beloved friend of mine. Another, last but not least, and there are much more. In the book of Matthew 24, 14, the scripture shows us one of the signs of Jesus coming. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then will the end come. Many people ask the question, will this world ever come to an end? Beloved friend of mine, it will. It will, God says, that his word will accomplish what he sent it to do. And when you read the Bible, the Bible talks about an end. When Jesus himself will descend from heaven with the sound of trumpets and put an end to this world. And we are nearer than ever before. Jesus says before he comes, the gospel will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And this is so true. The UN uh, uh, stated that there are 200 and odd countries. And I need you to know that the gospel have entered into majority, approximately 90% of these countries and are finding access to the others presently. All this is showing me that Christ is coming back. In the book of Revelation, chapter 14, it talks about three angels. And these angels are sent in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6. And they're having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth and to every nation, to every tribe, tongue, and people. Here are three angels. 
they have a special message. It is the final message of mercy to be taken to the world just before the close of probation, just before Christ comes back, giving the inhabitants of this world a chance to make a decision to accept Christ and to receive eternal life. But we are not fools. We know that not everybody will accept Christ. Not everyone will believe what Jesus says. But we will preach it for a witness that nobody have any excuse when Jesus come to say, I did not know. Everyone was given the opportunity. Everyone was given a chance to eternal life. So anybody that is lost cannot blame God. But they will blame their own self because God have tried to reach them in multiple times and multiple ways Jesus have tried to reach out to people and people just reject Jesus Christ. But three angels symbolize the messengers of God in these last days that will go and preach the everlasting gospel. And God is using various means. If you notice, we're coming live to you live on the internet, streaming the gospel. God used the printed page to preach the gospel. God used teachers to preach the gospel. God used evangelists to preach the gospel. Pastors, teachers. God used various means to preach the gospel. The gospel is going like wildfire around the world. And even though some people might reject, God have his faithful few that will believe that will hear his voice and they will come and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. Amen. Beloved friend, God is on the move. Sure, the devil is at work. I hear people talk and say the devil is busy. I even heard last week talking to a young man. He said, you know, the devil is winning. I just smiled to myself. It might seem as though the devil is winning, but what he doesn't know what he forgot is that when you look behind the book, you see that God will be victorious. What you're seeing is actually a war taking place between the forces of good and evil, Christ and Satan. But at last, Christ will be victorious and even the devil knows that. God is on the move tonight. God always sends a message to prepare his people for major worldwide events which affect their eternal destiny. If you remember, just before God brought a flood upon the earth in the antediluvian time, he sent Noah, a preacher of righteousness, to preach the everlasting gospel. Noah preached 120 years to warn the people that lived in that time. Some accepted and some did not. Just out of a whole world, only eight. So you cannot go with the majority because the majority of the world will be lost. Sorry, but that's the naked truth. When you read the book of Revelation chapter 20, it shows you in verse 9 that those that will be lost will be like the sands of the sea. We cannot look to people. We cannot look to the majority to lead us. We need to look to the word of God and to the Bible. God also, before Christ came, he sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for him. And John preached in the, will, in the wilderness and called people to baptism in preparation for the first coming of Christ. He sent his prophets, men like Elijah, Isaiah, men like Daniel, Ezekiel. All these prophets came on the scene and they preached and tried to call people back to repentance. During the, the dark ages and the reformers came up upon the scene, men like Huss and Jerome and John Wycliffe and Martin Luther, all these men God raised up to preach and call people back to righteousness. And during the 1800, God raised up some reformers as well, men like William Miller, James White and Ellen White and the rest of them, Hiram Edson and all of them, God raised up to bring back truth that was lost. I say thank God for these men. Amen. 
All these signs are showing us that Jesus Christ is coming back again. I'm going to close off with this. Jesus says in the book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 27 that there will be signs in the sun, moon, and the stars. In the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29, Jesus says the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven. Jesus says that the powers of heaven will be shaken as well. Did it happen? Yes, it did. This is not something that will happen in the future. It is something that has happened already. When you open the sixth seal in the book of Revelation chapter 6, the sixth seal shows that the sun will be dark and the moon will not give us light and the stars of heaven will fall. And immediately after this sign, the second coming of Jesus takes place. If you read Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30, the scripture says, Matthew says, And behold, Jesus came from heaven with his angels, and the nations were gathered. And Jesus says that Christ come with his angels. He came the first time as a baby in Bethlehem, but he will come the second time as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And beloved friend of mine, I could tell you that that time is not far off. You know, when these signs took place during the 17th, 18th century, it led men and women to the study of God's word. When the sun became dark, and that same very day, the moon that came up was red as blood. The stars fell from heaven. When the people saw this, it led them to go back to the study of God's word. They said to themselves, something is happening. These things are not happening by coincidence. Something is happening. Some thought it was the end of the world. And so it led them to a, a study of the Bible, some a verse by verse study of the Bible. And in studying the scriptures, they found out new truths like Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. And I want to apply that to us today. When we see these signs taking place, especially what is happening in our world with this COVID-19, never before have this happened in our generation, to see the whole world on its knees, the whole world being troubled by this disease. These things do not happen by coincidence. It should lead us to a study of God's word. It should lead us to our knees. It should lead us to come and pray together. It should lead us to have a closer relationship with Christ. Beloved friends, believe it or not, Jesus is coming back. Amen. And the truth is, he wants you and he wants your family to be ready for his second coming. Jesus loves you. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you have done. If you have never accepted Christ and you would like to accept Christ, I want you to know you can find acceptance and forgiveness for all your sins with Jesus. If you were one that used to attend church and used to read your Bible and you used to have a relationship with God, it's not too late. You're not far gone. Christ can save those who are in the gutter most. That's what the Bible says. You're not too far beyond the reach of Christ. His grace is sufficient for you. And Jesus says he can even heal your backsliding. I'm sure there are people in the church that might uh, look on you and try to put you down. But you remember who called you. It's not any human being. It's Jesus Christ. He's a God of second chance. And to you who are walking with Christ presently. You have a relationship with him. During this time, it should strengthen that relationship with Christ. During this time, it should cause us to want to love him more and want to do his will and in turn share Christ with others. So beloved friend of mine, as we close tonight, I pray that something that was said here through the power of God's spirit and his word would have touched your heart. 
and move you to think and want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. May God help us tonight as we close off. And thank you for listening. Would you bow your heads with me tonight as we pray? Oh great God in heaven, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for the preaching of the everlasting gospel. We thank you for those that were listening. And I pray that your spirit would speak to their hearts. There might be someone out there, Lord, who feel fearful of what is coming upon the earth. You have said you have not given us a spirit of fear. So give us peace. Give them peace. Help us not to be deceived. But may we be wide awake and to know that our redemption joy at night. O oh Lord, thank you for loving us. And thank you for revealing your truth to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please remember that on Friday night, we'll be coming to you straight from the home of one of our church family to welcome the Sabbath. And we want to invite you to join us as well. You have a good night and may God bless you. Thank you.